One of the reasons this has grown the way it has is because it's not just an agent shooting a video or taking someone's picture and interviewing them, but it's part of the story right. of Gainesville. It's, it's the messaging that he's used along the way to, to establish his motivation, right? He never right. talks about real estate. He talks about how much he loves his community and how much we have to celebrate and how much we have to be thankful for. And I'm going to prove it to you. And, and that right. is the kind of thing that endears and captures people's hearts and minds and gets people to want to play a role in that. And, and that's one of the reasons why we continue to have a lot of success through our partners. You are listening to the Real Estate Growth Hackers Show. Welcome to the Real Estate Growth Hackers Show. I'm Zach Hammer. With me today, I have Brian Weiss from thefacesof.com. Today, we are going to be talking about how to serve your local community at scale and grow your business in the wake. This is a this is a really powerful concept. Uh, it, it's it's going to dive into how real estate agents can be marketing effectively, uh, you know, long term, right? Because the reality is the market isn't always, you know, the average person in your community isn't always in the market for a real estate transaction. So how do we keep that awareness up? How do we do that effectively, uh, you know, at scale <laughs> without uh w- without only talking about real estate content? Because honestly, most people at most points, don't want and don't need to be hearing about it. So, uh, so Brian's going to be talking to us about that a bit today. So, Brian, go ahead and uh, and and tell us what's your backstory. Uh, kind of how do you how do you get yourself into this picture today of being part of thefacesof.com? Well, I appreciate the introduction, Zach, and it's a privilege to be here. I uh, I am the VP of Sales for a marketing company called Bugler Design Group. We are outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And there is a real estate agent that sort of solved the riddle um, for some of those challenges that you were describing. Right. And he's had a lot of success in Gainesville with a product called a project called the Faces of Hall County and was realizing that there should be somebody doing this in every community in the country. He's had a lot of success engaging his community. He's sort of become Mr. Gainesville as a result of this project. And um, right. So he came to my office with this idea, like, how do we how do we find a way to have a real estate agent partner in every community in the country that's serving their community, having incredible success, becoming highly visible, becoming very influential, sort of becoming the unofficial mayor of their community um, right. and, and the impact that that would have on the community through the way that he's done it. And so as he was telling me the story, I was like, wow, this is this is really great. I would like to be a partner in this. And so we have spent the last three and a half years kind of ebbing and flowing and, and trial and error, figuring out what's the easiest way to productize what Brad has been doing and deliver it in a way that it's really, really easy for a real estate agent to implement and execute. And, and they just have to go be the energy supply, right? They've got to go engage and have conversations with people in their community. And, and fortunately, it's been, it's been very successful. Obviously, you and I have found each other in some way as a result of some of that success. And so I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit, but um, yep. it's, Zach, it's, probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever been a part of and, and it's making real impact. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to talking about conceptually, what are we doing and, and why is that something other real estate agents should be thinking about or considering as part of how they market their business? Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously through our conversations, I've become familiar with what, uh, what you guys are doing with the faces of, uh, and I'm excited about it too. I, you know, I, I, I think, you know, what we're, we're probably like, Six months, maybe a year from when we, uh, uh, you know, initially connected to actually uh, recording this podcast, uh, and and I I don't know if you recall, but actually when we first started talking, I mentioned I've actually uh, had the same sort of vision, the same sort of idea of 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 what do you do to actually get uh you know get your message out there as a real estate agent in a way that that appeals to the uh, appeals to the community and isn't just training people to ignore you and 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 I think you guys are spot on uh, with uh with what you guys are doing so uh so let's go ahead and dive into like the the impetus of this so uh so your your involvement kind of comes in part way through the story right you you came in and connected up with Brad after he had sort of started figuring out this concept so let's go back to the beginning of of, of Brad's story where where sort of this idea came from um what it looks like what he started implementing and really what what the results started to look like right so so let's go back to the uh to the beginning where where did the idea for what you guys are doing with the faces of come from so brad has uh has been very successful in real estate in gainesville georgia which is about 45 minutes outside of atlanta it's a community of about 40,000 people and he's been doing real estate there for 27 years um grew up there you know born and raised with the high school there left went down into atlanta went to school at georgia tech and went right back up there to start his real estate career so 
he's he's very much into his community. Um, but the last when he started this in October 2015, he had had his seventh consecutive year as the number one producer in his market. So he was already pretty good at what he does. Right. But it's a commission only job, right? You want to maintain that position. And so he's always felt pressure to be the most visible, relevant person in Gainesville. And through that visibility, hopefully he could maintain that top spot as a real estate agent. When when he started, there were 1,700 different agents that had done a transaction in his market of 40,000 people, right? So it's a highly competitive right. market. This industry, frankly, is highly competitive. It doesn't matter where you are. There, there are a lot of real estate agents. And so you're competing for market share nonstop with not only people that are existing and, and trying to grow their business, but continual new entries into the market. So Brad- And, and Brad on that- on that point, on that point, real quick, just to, just to put that in perspective, when you say a lot, uh, I, I, we literally just ran the math on this because it was it was brought to mind uh, with a client of mine uh, in Las Vegas, for instance. There are eight times as many real estate agents as there are listings available to sell, right? So eight times as many agents, even as there is inventory. Right. And uh, I mean, obviously, right now, all across the country at the time that we're recording this, uh, most markets are dealing with incredibly low inventory. So that's that's even more pronounced now than it has been. But yeah, I, you're exactly right. Uh, the level of competition is is crazy. So anyway, but continue. So so uh, understanding that level of competition and and, you know, the, the impact that you're looking to make. Uh, what what happened next? So two really important things happened. He uh, connected with someone at the local high school that asked him to bring on a high school intern and learn a little bit about small business and small business marketing. And so he agreed to bring on this intern. At the moment that he agreed to do that, he didn't have a project for this intern, right? But he had right. just read a book called The Go-Giver. And if you've not read this book, this book lays out the story of how to build a world of abundance by serving others without keeping score. Um, one of my favorite books, Zach, of all time, it very much speaks it's to fantastic. kind of how I operate and um, what I think is, is really important as we kind of make our way through this journey. But so Brad used the, the framework in this book to create a project for this marketing intern to help him with, and it was called The Faces of Hall County. And again, the, the motivation is to, to be more visible, right? To, to create influence. At the time that he started this, his business Facebook page had 100 social media followers. His website was getting between five and 600 monthly visitors. His digital presence in 2015 was relatively weak. So right. he's like, maybe I can grab another hundred followers on my Facebook page. Maybe I can grab another couple hundred visits to my website. I'm going to go out and try to tell the story of Gainesville, Georgia, through the people that live here, one smiling face at a time. I'm going to collect those interviews, their, their images, a nice high-res picture of them. I'm going to put it on, our, on a website. And I'm going to share two stories a week on social media as a way of, of introducing the people of our community to each other. And this website will become a time capsule that represents the story of Gainesville. So if anybody wanted to know what it would look like to, to live in Gainesville, Georgia, you could visit Brad's website and listen to what all these people are saying about what they love about it, where they came from, what their favorite place is to have lunch. And you will get a sense of the quality of the people that live there. You'll get a sense collectively of what they love about Gainesville. And you'll have a really good feel for Gainesville, Georgia. And that project gave him permission to go out into the community and sit down and have coffee with virtually anybody and everybody. Spend a couple of minutes giving them attention, which is a big premise from the book, right? How do we serve others? But right. the service doesn't stop there. Like There's this kind of fundamental um, understanding that we've arrived at. People... People need four things. They need food, they need shelter, they need water, and they generally need attention, right? It's, we're, we're in a people mm. world. And so if you right. can play a role in giving other people attention, then right. that connection that you create with them is meaningful, it's real. And so through this project, he wanted to go out and give others attention, recognize and celebrate them for the role they played in helping make Gainesville a special place. Then through introducing the people to the rest of the community through social media, we could bring the community closer together by introducing people to each other and create conversations in the community that we're not a part of. But because right. we've created them, the community collectively will think about us in a positive way for the role we've taken in helping celebrate and shine a bright light on the place that we live. And frankly, who better to do that, Zach, than a real estate agent? I mean, that's your job, right? Is to showcase your community. And so um, he had been doing this, started in 2015. He and I met in 2018. So he was three years into doing this and right. his website traffic grew from 
like I said, 568 visits a month to 8,000. And his social media following grew from 100 social media followers to 3,000. And Ooh. his business in 2015, he did $26 million in production. Um, at the time of this recording, right? This is uh, March, 2021. So last year, 2020, his team did $52 million. Um, the the I, gap between first place Brad in 2015 and first place Brad now in 2021 has grown significantly. And he doesn't do anything else to market his real estate business. There's no Zillow right. leads, there's no just listed, there's no just solds. Brad has just poured himself into his local community. And as a consequence, he's sort of become Mr. Gainesville and becoming Mr. Gainesville has made him influential and enough in the, in the community that a large section of the community wants to work with him when they have challenges or they need help with real estate. And it's, right. it's, just, it's a really rewarding way to go build a visible brand. And, and like the book says, how do, you, how do you serve a community or an audience, whatever your audience might be at scale? And Brad has just creatively come up with a way um, to do just right. that. And so we've productized that, as I said, and we're now showing agents all over the country how to do exactly what Brad did. But it's, it's super rewarding, Zach. Yeah, man. It, and, and it's such a, it's such a powerful concept. I mean, it's, uh, you know, really there, there's, there's a lot that goes into this, um, that, that, that makes it work so well part, you know, one of the things that you mentioned that I want to pull out and talk about, um, it, it, at least to draw a, a, a point from, you know, you mentioned that one of the things that people need is, is, is attention. Right. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of different ways that you could, that you could word that, but like part of, part of what makes this so magical to me is, is most things, most things require like like some level of of meaningful energy expenditure in order to create value in the world, right? Like it, like doing a real estate transaction. Uh, there's a reason why real estate agents get paid what they do. They're, they're like they're complicated things. Keeping them together can be uh, you know can be stressful. Um, you know, generally that stress is more often on maybe one side of the transaction than the other. Uh, it's it's you know a little bit harder right now. Uh, you know, to, to work with a buyer than it is to work with a seller in most markets. Um, but still, you, you kind of have the, that complexity that comes into there. Anyway, so like cre that kind of creating value takes a, a fair bit of energy expenditure, right? And, and you, can't, you can't do an infinite amount of that without like scaling up your teams and your process. But I'll tell you what, giving somebody a compliment, lifting somebody up is one of the easiest ways to create value in the world out of thin air with basically no energy, right? Like literally just saying like, uh, you know, Hey, I, I love what you're up to. Uh, let's, let's, let's put some spotlight on you. Let's, let's talk about what you're up to and, and, and give it some attention. You create value out of thin air. Having those conversations are one of the easiest things in the world to do because you're just, you're, you're just, you know, shining good feelings on people. It's not <laughs> hard. Right. Uh, and and yet it, it actually creates value in the world, right? It, it, it creates value for that person. It creates value for the community uh, in terms of being able to, to point uh, to great businesses or great people in the community that are doing cool things. Um, and, and so what I found is inevitably when, when people are in the habit of creating value, it's like the, the, the deals and the money just sort of find it, right? Like they, they find you. Um, if, if you're creating enough value, uh, then, then the money sort of takes care of itself. Uh, and especially when the, when the level of energy expenditure is so low as basically just, just having to have a conversation. Right. And, uh, and, and yeah, so I, I think that portion is part of what makes this so powerful. Uh, you know, one of the other things that you, that you mentioned about this. So, so the networking opportunity on this, like I, you know, I see that as being uh, twofold and I'm sure you could speak to this as well. Uh, you're going to get the benefit of the direct networking with the people you're talking to, right? Uh, you're you're going to get get the conversations, meeting business owners, meeting other people locally, and literally that work by itself. I'm sure there are deals where just through those conversations are 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 you know it's like hey yeah it's like oh it just so happens I need to sell my home like can can we talk about this? Uh, so you'll you'll have that, but even aside from that, by shining a light on somebody else, and this is especially true with businesses, there is a natural inclination on their side to share that back out to their community as well. We call, we call that halo marketing, right? Where you get, you get the opportunity for they're spreading your message for you at no cost. Have you guys seen a lot of, a lot of that happening as well? 
It, yeah, we, we and I hadn't heard the term halo marketing, but we call it like it, it's kind of molecular growth, right? When we when we highlight a person and their entire Facebook world sees them being celebrated and they think about that individual in a positive way, there's sort of a transfer right. of trust to the person that allowed them to or enabled them to feel that way. And so not only right. does the person that we've interviewed have a great experience and feel like a celebrity for the day. Every time they see someone in the future highlighted, they're remembered about that experience and they think positively. Mm. And so do their network, right? And so this is how Brad has arrived at 3,000 followers on Facebook is that my friends are, you know, the friends of the people that are being interviewed are seeing it and they're like, wow, this is really great. I feel good watching somebody else be recognized for being a positive member of our community. And so I'm going to like Brad's Facebook page so I can continue to see him celebrate others because I'd like to see who else gets highlighted. And, and we actually allow them, we provide a way for them to nominate others so they can get emotionally involved and kind of co-author the story, um, which right. again, everybody, everybody gets value. The value is delivered in layers. And to your point, when we, right. you know, we, we interview someone that owns the barbecue joint in town that, that somebody has recommended we interview because it's their favorite place to have lunch and we finish right. and we share the link to their story online before we even promote it on social media, they're going to beat us out there. They're going to put it out there for us because they're going to say, wow, this great project that Brad Abernathy is doing that is so impactful in our community just recognized me as an important member. I'm proud to have a business here and I'm proud to share this project. Check out what, you know, check out my interview. And so you, right. you begin to weave connections, right? Through storytelling and through, and through value giving and to your point, right. That value given is 20 minutes just recognizing them for being happy and being positive and, and just right. listening to them about why they arrived in Gainesville and what do they love about it. And it, it, it can seem so insignificant, Zach, but it, it's, it's been remarkable to see the impact that it has when you, when you get an entire community to put their arms around a project like this. Um, right. I mean, restaurants that have been highlighted have run out of food for days after being highlighted <laughs> as part of a project like this, right? So how does that restaurant right. owner make, how do you think he feels about Brad or any of our other partners that are doing this that have had such an impact on his business that he's out of food and he's not just serving people, but the people coming in to get food are talking about things they learned about him and they're having real human conversation. And so now the people right. that are becoming customers of his feel like they know him and they're more likely to come back again in the future. And so right. this, like, you can't, you know, I don't want to overstate, but it's hard to understate the significance of simply giving of your time in a way that's right. completely selfless, you know, with the intent of, of establishing why where you live is a special place to be. And that's because we have a lot of positive people that contribute to that. And so let's, right. let's create a, a project that's going to highlight those people and then wait and see what happens because it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and man, I mean, the 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 level of power that comes from you know from from building up the people in your community it, it's it really is it 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 it's kind of staggering you're right like it like it feels you know most most things seem to be very overhyped in terms of like what you what what you could potentially expect from them but honestly this is this is one of those things where it's like just talking about the real the real world implications of what you're doing feels like it's overhyped but it, it's not there's a lot of power here and and not all of it not all of the power is going to be directly like a financial ROI. There is, like you already mentioned, shoot, 26 million to 52 million. There is a financial ROI for sure. Um, but like, a, a, like part of this is literally, this is the kind of thing where as, as a real estate agent in your local community, you might, you might by doing this, be the person that makes a difference for whether or not that business shuts down in a year or so, right? Because they, they get that influx of cash that keeps them afloat, that lets them bridge the gap to, to stay in business. And, and it, it's like, I don't know if you guys have heard of stories like that for, you know, of, of where those kinds of situations are happening. You may not always, because they may not always uh, feel comfortable enough to share it, but I, I would bet that that's exactly the kind of thing that's happening occasionally, right? Where it's this kind of attention actually really keeps somebody going. Uh, and, and as the real estate agent, it's like you, you keep, you keep your community in business. You keep, you know, food on the table for, you know, for somebody for another month, for another year, um, just by going out and having a 20 minute conversation. And, uh, so uh, you know, I, I love to talk about projects or I, uh, you know, I like to, 
you know, lift up and, and be involved in projects where you are, you are simultaneously doing good while doing well, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? So you can, you, 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 you go out and you do good in the world, but it still help, you know, it still helps you to, you know, do well as a, as a business owner, right? Like you do want something out of this, but it's it's not so much a like like a tit for tat kind of thing. It's not it's not you're gonna go out and and talk to this person. You're expecting that person to give you X number of deals. It's it's not that kind of thing. It's you go out and you focus on giving value, and you know that naturally the universe conspires to give that value back, right? Like yeah, it just, there's it, a sense it, of it, belief that has to play a role right. in that, right? It's we're we're not the, the way we're doing this isn't necessarily a fit for everybody because you have to one you have to get satisfaction out of of helping. Right. Like a right. lot of our partners now, we have partners in 32 states. They tell us that they do their interviews the first thing in the morning because it sets the tone for the rest of their day because it's such a positive oh, energy yeah. exchange and they just feel good right. about it. And so, right, right if, if you enjoy that, I had a, a lady signed up today out in Tempe, Arizona. She said, I don't even care if I make a dollar out of this. Like, I, I feel so fortunate to have met you guys. I just can't wait to go learn more about my community and learn the, about the people in my community, right? And so if you feel right. that way, Zach, I can guarantee you two years from today, if we go back and revisit how Elizabeth's doing, her business will be in a different place. And, and she personally will be in a different place because of the role she now plays right. in her community and the impact she's having on others. Um, and, and to your point, right. and I don't... I don't use the word power, not that I think power is a bad thing, but I, I think about it more as influence. Like how do we as individuals become influential? And for me, influence is, is by turning, us, turning ourselves into a magnet. How can we do right. something so positive that people are drawn to us, right? And that's what this is, is, you know, Brad was approached during the holidays last year and the city of Gainesville asked him if they could paint a mural in downtown of the project and all the people that have been interviewed as a way wow. of continuing to celebrate this project, right? And so here's right. a guy that's just a real estate agent that's a well-producing real estate agent that, that had this idea and wanted to try to have a positive impact. And five years later, you know, it's changing the way the community thinks about itself. And right. I just don't know how else you could go do that for two coffees a week, right? That's effectively <laughs> right. what we're doing, right? Is so and shoot, is, you're probably having the coffee anyway. Shoot, I'm drinking be. coffee right now, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, that definitely should be part of your program. And so you should be able to fit that out, that in without any trouble. And it takes minutes to put together a social media post. But the reach, right. so social media is your distribution channel from the website to get people back to the website to read stories. And it allows things to go right. in a viral way. And so literally for the cost of two coffees a week, an hour on average, his world right. has changed and so has the community in the city of Gainesville. And um, yeah, like you said, a lot of things are overstated and I don't, I'm not a big fan. I've been in sales a long time. I try really hard to set fair right. expectations and try not to overstate things, but watching how this has played out and now having three years of adding partners and, and helping them do the same things and seeing similar experiences happen, right. um, you know, whether it's this way or you find another way, and, and there's right. we'll probably get into why this works, but I'm a big fan of story, Zach. Like right. a lot of agents oh, yeah. go out and they get on they get on YouTube and they go interview business owners. And I think that they should be doing those things. Um, right. One of the reasons this has grown the way it has is because it's not just an agent shooting a video or taking someone's picture and interviewing them, but it's part of the story right. of Gainesville. It's it's the messaging that he's used along the way to to establish his motivation right he never right. talks about real estate he talks about how much he loves his community and how much we have to celebrate and how much we have to be thankful for and i'm going to prove it to you and and that right. is the kind of thing that endears and captures people's hearts and minds and gets people to want to play a role in that and and that's one of the reasons why we continue to have a lot of success through our partners and um and, yeah, and it's, i it's, it's i think I think that's an incredibly, you know, you, you just touched on this, but I'm going to reemphasize this. I, I think that's an incredibly important point about why what you're doing is working. Because I, uh, I have seen other strategies where, uh, shoot, so first off, done is better than perfect, right? If people are out there going and interviewing businesses, like that's, that's going to be way better than doing nothing, right? It should be but doing it. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> But there's there's a portion of this like and this, you know, you and I are very much in alignment on this portion, because even, you know, the, the the projects that I was working on that was similar. Um, I had I had the same basic idea of saying, like, when when we go out and we and we and we do this this thing where, where we're going to spotlight the local community, it's not just designed to be a commercial for that local business. Right. We're not just like saying, like, hey, what do you do? You know, what do you what's your what are your offerings? Uh, like how long have you been in business? What are your hours? It's not, it's not just like a commercial that, that sort of gives people the, you know, the play by play of what they could get. Cause that's not going to be enough to keep people entertained to like actually take time out of their day to go and find your commercial. Right. So the thing that makes this work and be successful is that you're, you're pulling out the thing that we, we always find entertaining in, in other people, which is, which is the story, right? The, the idea of, Sure, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about the fact that you have a business. It's not like we're gonna hide that, but th that that's not the that's not the crux of the interview. That's not the crux of the uh, of of what's what's going on here. the The main point is that we're gonna draw out the story. It's like who who are you? What uh, like what what do you love about the area? What what makes you come alive? What you know uh, even deeper than what are the services that you offer? Why do you offer them? Like what what do you, what yes. are you looking to do with your with your restaurant? Right? It, it's 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 finding out the things like you know I started this restaurant because uh, I loved my grandma's recipes and I thought the world should should get to have my grandma's recipes every time that they might want to. Right? And it's like when you when you hear stuff like that, you're like, oh, now I'm connecting. To this yes. business and yeah sure i want to hear the hours and whatnot now but but it's the story that's inter interesting it's the story that makes the thing spread it's the story that that keeps somebody interested enough to take time out of their own day to to go and you know read it uh and continue like to subscribe and want to read more right it's it's like i think zach i think all of us as people want to feel like we're a part of something and in a foundational way you know, it's, it's our community. It's where we live. That's kind of where it starts, whether that's right. in, a, in a small level at your neighborhood, but like I live in Buford, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, there's a lot of pride in our community of, of Buford, right? And so right. when we start hearing the stories of people that live amongst us, we have something in common and that's where we live in, in an appreciation for where we live. And now we get to right. kind of dive into the story of how other people arrive here and what their backgrounds are. And that becomes fascinating. And right. I think we're all curious about who lives around us, right? And, and how we arrived and have right. so, how we have such a great community. And so to your point, it's meet John Jones, owner of Bubba's Barbecue, but that's the last time you talk about Bubba's Barbecue. It's why did you open Bubba's Barbecue right. in Gainesville? What do you love about Gainesville? Right. You know, what was your inspiration to start a restaurant in the first place? Like that's, that's how we right. begin to emotionally engage people to the point where they they, they start following your Facebook page because they want to see the next person that's celebrated. And, and right. yeah, I, I just, storytelling is such an important aspect of communication here in our country. And I think people that are good storytellers can, you know, they can be influential and they can, they can be persuasive, I guess is the best way to say it. And, and so right. we created a, a, a platform that enables our partners to be good storytellers and, and they just have to consistently celebrate a couple of key themes and it completely changes the way that they position themselves and, and they showcase themselves out in front of the community. And um, yeah, there's a lot of gravity to that. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's, that's the, that's the key. So, you know, like you think about, you think about like how many TV shows start like every year and then don't get, don't get, you know, pulled in for another season, right? Like how, how many, how many things start and just don't continue? The, the reality is, I think for most people, it, it, it can be kind of hard to be interesting, right? And what I love about what you guys are doing is that it's not something that you need to overthink too much, right? Like it's, it's, it's naturally interesting. Cause we, we are like, like, you know, if, if you look back, you know, through like the history of, uh, of television and entertainment, like you'll see that there was a, there was a pretty big shift into reality TV and how real it is, who knows, but, um, but there was a big shift into reality TV more and more and more compared to the, uh, you know, fabricated stories, because we do, we connect with like real stories. And it's a whole lot easier to just sort of put a camera on somebody who's living out their life. And that's interesting enough, 
than, than it is to like have to actually create something. And so what, what's nice is just by uncovering those stories, um, it's, it, there's, there's kind of a multifold uh, you know, aspect to this where everybody's story is going to be somewhat unique Right. And, and that's kind of the that's that's the spice that makes it interesting. And yet everybody's story is also going to share similarities. Right. And, and that's that's the thing about like the human condition that 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 keeps us connected, where it's like there's things that's like, oh, like like I've never experienced life that way. That's interesting. But then similarly, it's like, oh, but you still have the same you know, goals, desires, passions, like like the same things that inspire you, inspire me. And that's where you get kind of that it's interesting, but also connecting at the same time. And 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 it's 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 really a powerful, um, you know, it's really a powerful equation that's uh that's simple and uh and and fairly easy to do. Um, so yeah, so so let's let's go ahead and dive in and and talk a little bit about about how this actually works. Okay, so say somebody wants to go out and do this, uh, and and first off, one of the things that I do want to note. So again, uh, Brian is here representing the faces of uh, We have a link that we'll be giving you toward the end of this show as well, where you can get access. You know, basically you can go there and learn more about it. Through uh, through the fact that you came through this podcast, and we'll give you that link in a bit as well. Uh, in the in the future, we might even have some bonuses and, and whatnot available for you uh, as a result. Right now, uh, we don't have any currently, but you know if you're listening to this in the future, that we might. Um, but so we'll we'll get that to you in a bit. But the the main reason why I want to bring that up is that we'll, we're going to talk a little bit, I think, about the more tactical step by step how you do some of this, how you actually go out, how you make this happen. But I want people to understand. Aspects of this may feel a little bit daunting, but the faces of is going to be part of what makes this easy, right? So if if you if if you hear what we're about to describe and you sound like it, it it sounds like a little bit more than what you know to know how to do and know how to achieve, that's where the faces of comes in. It's going to make this process uh, a lot easier for you, so that all you have to do is go out and have the coffee um, rather than uh, than having to think through building out the website and, and all of that. It, essentially, you can implement the system. Um, so let, let's go ahead and dive into that. So. So starting out, somebody wants to get started with this strategy. What what does it what does it look like to get up and running and, and to to start running, uh, you know, a locally focused, community driven uh, site where we're interviewing and, and getting the stories of our community? So if I if I were to start without having the experience I had, I would probably actually consider starting a group inside of Facebook and okay. highlighting people in my community and starting like in Buford, right, the Buford Community Facebook group. And then right. I would go out and I would, I would highlight and introduce people through that as a fundamental, like, this is easy. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Here's right. the reason why I don't like that, that strategy. And, and it's going to happen at a, at a faster velocity as we move forward. But district, like social media channels, our audiences right. are going to fragment across lots of different social media channels. And I would not put all of my assets and all my time and effort and energy into any single social media platform today. So right, we took a really right. hard position on the, the idea of building a standalone website and then leveraging social media as my reach to tell the story and get people right. back to the website because the website will always be there and these people that are being highlighted there will be there forever. So if yeah. we don't leverage and, and social media, go ahead, sorry. What, what, yeah, one thing, one thing to note on that. I mean, th th that's an incredibly powerful point. So everybody should be thinking about this regardless and how they're doing their marketing, right? Social media is really great and really powerful. And yet it, it is, it's not yours, right? It, it's, it's what we, you know, the, the phrase has been coined a while ago already, but uh, they call it digital sharecropping, right? Where it's like you're farming in somebody else's farm. And sure, you might get, you might get paid out a portion of that. You might be able to capitalize on a portion of that, but it's not your farm. And at any point they could decide, I don't want you here anymore. And you could lose everything that worked for you. And, and, and it's not always getting click, kicked off the platform. It's not always as aggressive as that. Sometimes it's, you know, hey, uh, they figured out that groups aren't getting the reach anymore. So they stop showing the post to people in their newsfeed. So what, what used to go out to thousands of people goes out to 10. Um, or, and, and, you know, they do that for a lot of different reasons. Some of them are, are, uh, are, are more benevolent in the sense of they figured out that Certain types of posts people were just not enjoying and were ignoring, <laughs> uh, but over over time, I mean, these places are here to make money too. So uh, the other thing that ends up happening is they start decreasing reach so that they could force you to pay to keep getting that reach. And so it, it is. It's really important that that your your strategies are not centered 100% around social media, but that you leverage social media to get them to something that you control, a, a website, an email list, something that that you own and you control. So 
I, I love that. I love that point. Uh, go ahead and uh, continue. Right. So, so let's, let's move past that. We don't want to take advantage of something that's free in social media. So we're now we're going to, we're going to have the website, right? Should I do this on my real estate website or should I build an independent right. website? And there's, there was a lot of dialogue around this too. I think right. a lot of the reasons that this has been so emotionally powerful is because we're building sites that are dedicated to this project. They're not, they're not a tab on a real estate agent's website where you have to go to the realtor's website to read blog <laughs> posts, right? This right. website is dedicated to the community and all you're going to find on there is a celebration of people. So that, that would suggest uh, authenticity. It, you know, it, it would just suggest that you're sincere in your efforts to, to do something really special for the community, right? And so the, right. Stronger, the stronger my ability to develop trust at scale in the same way that we deliver value, the more people are going to buy in and be interested in what we're doing and that creates more impact. So um, yep. you can build a WordPress yeah, website. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, like, uh, you know, to your point on this, part of, the, part of what you got to think about uh, whenever you're doing any marketing as a, as a real estate agent is everybody's busy. Everybody has a short attention span. And so you want everything that you have set up to be immediately understood at 60 miles an hour, right? Where it's, it, you know, like think of the equivalent of, of how clear your message would need to be on a billboard in order for somebody to actually remember it, take action after they've seen it, right? It, it's the same kind of idea where you want somebody to, to see the website name, see see what's going on there and not have to do a mental jump to say what is this about right. you know like cuz they they're not they're not looking unless they're looking for real estate help they're not looking for your real estate website but they may be interested in learning more about the community regardless of they're interested in in looking for real estate help right now um, and that that's part of the point of this is that this is a strategy that you know it, it's it's more the equivalent of building the dam and collecting the the you know the wall of uh, you know the water of a of attention and influence, so that when the time's right, it flows out, it creates the momentum, the power of those real estate transactions and and whatnot as you need them. Um, but you 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 essentially have to wall it up first and start start building that attention, right? And uh, uh, and you don't do that with real estate information. You can only do that with with this more local information. So anyway, I completely agree. Website dedicated to this purpose is going to actually you know, really build up the momentum of that, around this. So continue. 100%. Yeah. And so then you get into what are the elements of the website that are important. It's, you can build a, a WordPress website today for a couple thousand dollars with, with a firm like ours. Like you don't, you don't have to spend, right. you know, a ton of money to build a, a functional site that looks great, that serves its purpose. Right. right. And so then what, what all should be a part of the website itself? Um, we built it out as sort of a blog site where the homepage just flows with people's stories and then there, right. there's a menu with a couple of different things that, you know, we want to celebrate the person that's sponsoring the project, right? So there's an about your host page where they can actually go read the story of the individual. There's an about your community page where you celebrate the community and what makes it a special place and why do people love it? And, you know, direct links to the chamber of commerce and to the school system information. And like the, the site right. itself should be a resource. And it's, it's right. not just stories of people in the community, but when they get there, it's like, wow, like, right. Who possibly could know our community better than the person that's doing this project? Like, look at all the people they've met. Right. Look at how well they know our community. Like this, again, removing it from your real estate website and doing this on its own, who, as a right. person that just happens to be a realtor, is going to have the community right. looking at you and saying, oh my, like, this is who I would have to work with if I needed help. Because the, nobody could right. possibly know our market better than that person does, right? So yeah. there are and steps that's, that are required to create that. Exactly. And, and, that's, and, and that's, that's a really big, big point there too. It's, it, there, this sort of strategy could technically work with other industries as well, right? Where, where, where the, the person, you know, could stand to just get that, that, that local awareness and that helps them. But I would say it, it's, it's more pronounced and more powerful in the real estate community because it's one of the few industries where that local expertise matters so much, right? Like, you know, a, an insurance agent might be able to run a strategy like this and, and, and they'd get the benefit of the attention but it doesn't necessarily, the fact that it's local only matters in that they're communicating with their local community. They, they don't necessarily need to be a local expert 
uh, in order to do their job well, right? As a as an insurance agent, but as a real estate agent, this is like part of the perceived expertise that you need to have. And and so what's cool is that it it, it fits so well. Where it, sure it doesn't communicate everything that a real estate agent needs to needs to have in terms of expertise to be able to do business and do it successfully, right? Like you have to know how to do real estate, do a real estate transaction. And this, and this doesn't communicate that portion yet, um, but it does communicate one key uh, and very important portion, which is that local expertise. So, so what's cool is that you, you know, you simultaneously get that, get, get to build up this massive amount of local attention while still building up your authority on a, a, an aspect of your you know, credential and credibility that does matter as a real estate agent being a local expert. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I, we, we talk a lot about, do we want to stick only with real estate agents, right? Because we could go after financial advisors. Right. We could go after attorneys. We could go after, I've talked to a bunch of people in State Farm Insurance exploring the fit. And the reality is, in my opinion, and, and having watched this play out now, this is how a real estate right. agent should build their, their, their presence in their local community. And for what you just said, right. that's the reason why. Um, we have had right. different types of businesses kind of travel down this road with us um, and, and have a couple that are still with us. But we always come back to like the real estate agent is who this was built for. It was built by a real estate agent. And, and who right. else should be the local community resource more than they should? And and. and Touching on that for just a second, Zach, most consumers don't even know how to go figure out what a good agent looks like. So you talk about <laughs> right. a lot of the a lot of the other criteria that aren't a part of this. I don't know right. how heavily that weighs into making a decision to work with a real estate agent because such a right. huge percentage of people that get into the business end up getting out because it's just a really hard industry to, to be really good and be consistently producing in. Um, and the consumer, once they make their mind up, like, man, I, we're going to sell our house in the next two years. We've got to find an agent. Hey, right. how about Johnny that's doing this project in our community that everybody seems to like and trust? Why don't we go talk to him? He's a real estate agent. Well, I'm going to go on his business side of what he does and go read his testimonials and go see how he communicates right. on social media. And, and, and they'll find those other things out about you. But this has the light shining right. so bright that at least you were considered. And this was exactly. how Brad described it when he first started. His goal in Gainesville, Georgia... If anybody were to come into Gainesville and ask anybody there, who are the top three agents in this town? Right. He didn't have to be listed as number one every time, but he wanted to make that list every time that conversation had was was had. Right. And, and I would say that he's been successful and <laughs> yeah, sounds know, like it. <laughs> grabbing as much of that attention as he could. Yeah. And I, I think I think the key about like having the expertise in the real estate side of things, uh, you're right. It is it is less it is less important for winning the business on the front end. Uh, it's it's more important for the long-term momentum and success, right? Because uh, especially if you're building up, if you're if if you're building up kind of this this referral network, this this group of people that that are going to be talking about what you're up to, um, you have to have that expertise on the service end. Otherwise, the momentum stops at that one transaction, right? And to really have this leverage and 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 grow big, you want the the you know the the deal that comes in the the person that you're working with on this transaction you want them to say this was a fantastic experience and tell everybody else that they know when they need a real estate you know real estate agent that that they loved working with you and so you're right this kind of strategy gets you the opportunity the real estate expertise is what what wins you the next one <laughs> what it's what it what it's what builds the momentum that no doubt right so I, and I tell people this every day as I I'm talking to people that are interested in partnering with us, we can get you visibility and we can earn you some additional business, but your real, your right. real success is, is really how capable are you and how much better are you than your competition in your market, right? So Brad right. has been 26 years in the business. He's, he's really, really good at what he does. And right. so people felt good about connecting with him and getting his help. And then they got to experience how Brad approaches it. And, and that made right. them even more endeared to the project and, and more willing to talk about Brad in a meaningful way. And so you have to have both, no, no doubt right. about it. Um, but, you know, we all start somewhere, right? We're right. not all 26 right. years in the business. And so you've got right. to learn on the job and you just have to have a, an appreciation, a sensitivity to how important every single experience is for the people that you're able exactly. to help. And um, that's, you know, that's one of the recipes to, to success and building a sustainable business in this business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So going back to the, uh, 
going back to the to the to the strategy, the tactics. So so far, we've got uh, we've got the understanding. We want to build this out as a website. Um, we're going to leverage social media to drive traffic to the website, right? As part of part of the way that we that we build attention there. Um, and so we, we've got our website. Our website uh, is going to house uh, more than just these stories. It's all it's going to be like a community resource center with with key links, things that people might want, might, might need in terms of interacting with the community. Uh, what, what comes next? What do, we, what do we do? How do we actually implement, um, you know, maybe getting those interviews out or, or maybe there's something else that, uh, that I'm missing that comes before that? No, so the, well, the key there, once we, there's a lot of different ways on how to go out right. and conduct an interview and, and get that interview on the website, right? And, and so you can talk right. to, depending on who you're having help you, as far as building the site and stuff, you can explore those options. We've, we've been fortunate. Right. I've got a, we've got a really great team here. We've automated the entire process. So it doesn't require a ton right. of effort and energy to get people's stories on the site. And now we just go have coffee. Right. Um, but once you're there, we're recommending that we're sharing two stories a week, right? And so right. early on in your project, you're going to want to learn how to boost posts. Um, you, you don't want to just share these stories with people that are following you organically. Um, we want to grow right. our audience, right? We want people that aren't following us organically to see what we're doing. And so we recommend spending three right. or four dollars, letting that post, right? So you send a post out on Monday or Tuesday, spend a couple bucks so everybody in your local geography sees it, let that run for right. two or three days to maximize its engagement, and then send another one out. So twice a week, we're doing that so that we're always out driving engagement, which is keeping us top of mind, right? And, and so right. the frequency matters, and, and we've arrived at that through trial and error, right? Some, some partners are right. like, Man, I'd like to do four a week. And some are like, I'd like to do two a month. Well, right. the one thing I'll say about this, Zach, is distribution is really important, right? Our ability to stay out in front of our consumer is a, a really important factor in this. And we have to be right. super consistent for it to work. This right. type of effort isn't nearly as impactful if I say, wow, I'm going to be really busy in March. So I'm going to highlight 20 people in February, take March off right. and come back in April and get back on my rhythm because you will lose momentum in March if you're not out right. there in front of the community, right? And so we always recommend right. having more people on your site than you've actually highlighted out on social media so that you've always got people to share and you're, you're right. just consistently sharing stories two, two times a week. And then you'll have to pay attention to the impact you're getting through social media. Facebook and Instagram are still the, the two highest performing platforms. Um, right. But we have partners all over the country that are, that are kind of experimenting with a lot of the other options that are out there as ways of getting visibility. And, you know, then you let the community participate. We have lots right. of partners that have local well, real, newspapers that are, go ahead. Yeah. Real quick, before you get into that, I do. I want to touch on. I want to touch on the uh, the boosting because I know uh, we've probably got people, uh, you know, listening, watching that have maybe tried running Facebook ads in the past, have tried some level of that, and and I just want to. I want to you know put it out there for people of all the types of stuff that you could throw some money behind, of all the types of of things that you could do. This is one of the easiest things in the world in terms of uh, in terms of it it working readily. Right. So there, like there, there's not a bunch of advanced ninja targeting that you have to do. There's not, you know, you don't have to like do a lot of work on the exact right copy and headlines to make it perfect. Um, this is the kind of thing where just by sharing these stories out there, by getting this information out there, it, 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 it spreads really effectively. And it's actually, you know, I, I don't know if, if you're familiar, you probably are, but this is exactly the kind of content that actually Facebook does want right now. They, they are very big on, on reemphasizing the local community, local news. Like they found that that's a big portion that people are engaging it with. So they, they want it out there. And so when they start to see this type of content come through your, uh, you know, come through your pages, through your site, um, it, it actually builds a momentum on its own with Facebook uh, in, in a number of ways. So first off, sure, you're going to pay to get it in front of the first handful of people but a lot of those people are actually going to share it out themselves. They're going to help spread it organically for you. Um, so you're going to get way further reach than you might. Like, it, it, let's be honest, very few people are going to share your, uh, you know, what's, what's my home worth, uh, home value calculator, right? Like they're not, they're not likely to share that, right? But they will share these. They, they'll, they'll tag people on them. They'll spread it out for you, right? Um, so it, it, it has a, a fair bit of organic reach, even after you've paid to get it that first boost of amplification. Um, the other thing is that over time, 
you know, we, we talked a little bit about this. Facebook has, has decreased the reach for the most part on, on the organic side of like what you post on a Facebook page, or um, it's a little bit less a problem in Facebook groups, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's happening all over the place. Um, this is the type of content that actually can still get good organic reach. Um, even, even without paying. Now I, I completely with you, I would still pay just to make sure. Um, but what's nice is that you, you will, you'll do a post on something like this and Facebook will actually show it to a good portion of your audience, even without having to pay for it yet. Um, paying for it's going to give it that extra juice. And, and really it's, it's a worthwhile thing to do. You know, I completely agree. Um, but there is a nice benefit of as Facebook sees this, this local, you know, natural content, um, they will actually start showing it to people more, you know, you know, even for free. So, um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of power uh, in that for sure. But uh, you were, and then I, we can get to this in a second. One thing that I do want to make sure that we talk about, we sort of glossed over how those interviews are actually conducted. I do want to talk about that at some point, um, just so that we could give people a couple of key ideas of maybe what sort of questions to ask, but you were talking about the, the, the partnerships with newspapers. So let's go ahead and continue that train of thought real quick. And then we'll come back to uh, uh, the interviews. Well, I think what, what we're trying to create is visibility and visibility. Right. Often people assume that that is almost entirely through social media, right? So we had a lot of partners that came up with a lot of different ideas. Like anytime I interview somebody, I'm going to give them a t-shirt. Anytime I interview right. a business owner, I'm going to give them a little three inch round branded sticker and they're going to put it out on their, the storefront of their window. Right. Um, and right. so we built, we actually built a marketing store so that our partners can get their local market branded anything nice. they want because we want visibility and in, and in a bunch of markets local media has picked up this project on behalf of our sponsors and have said, hey, I'd like to put one of your stories in every issue of our Saturday newspaper, or hey, it's the local news, I'd like to come do a feature on you interviewing somebody and I'd like to promote your project because of the impact you're having, right? And so if you just right. have an abundance mindset and you keep your antennas up for the potential doors that could open as you have conversations with people, we were, I just am always thinking about how can I impact more people? How can I, how can we, how can we be more visible and, and through our visibility, we know we'll have a bigger impact on people. And the community right. has a way of wanting to help because you're not selling ads. You're not asking for anything. Right. right. And so they're helping you helps the people you're helping. And so communities generally in a community way want to be a part of that because everybody wins. And, and that's, right. Honestly, Zach, that's part of what makes it so special is everybody that's helping showcase what you're doing is actually doing good. Right. So they feel good about it. They, they know that they're helping serve other people. And, and that's actually right. making you more of a celebrity, which actually is going to have a really huge impact on your business down the road. And so um, right. I just wanted to mention it. It's not all social media um, as, as right. the way to get distribution. But to your point, when you're building that dam so that you have the water, You've got to put right. the work in and build the dam, right? Your right. asset isn't getting any traffic when you first start. So you, you've got to go, you've got to put a few months in of interviews and you've got to be a good storyteller and you've got to be super positive with people. And then as that momentum wheel starts turning, that little hamster wheel starts to spin, it just, ha it just, it just only gets bigger and better if you'll be consistent in your effort. Have, have you guys found that there's like a, that there's a, a, a timeline for when, when the when the, the the stone that you have been pushing up the hill starts to feel like it's crested the hill and starts rolling down of its own momentum at the other end, right? Is there is there a timeline that you sort of see where where the momentum of it, you know, of the project itself starts to take over? Now we have all of our partner sites on analytics, right? So you can see right, right. away a huge jump. Like you're going to go from a website that has zero traffic to a website that's getting right. 2,200, 2,500 visitors a month on it, and and that doesn't take right. That doesn't take hardly any time at all because of the convenience of social right. media distribution, right? And so right. we can demonstrate to our partners that they're being seen. Um, you never right. know when that first conversation is going to happen where they say, hey, I saw you as part of the Faces of Tucson, and I'd like to talk to you right. because we're, talk we're thinking about selling our house, right? I got a note last week right. from somebody out in Oregon. Her first interview was her dad. Her right. second interview was her dad's friend. And her dad's right. friend, coincidentally, needs to sell his house, right? And right. so the second interview she ever right. did is part of this project, wanting to highlight his small business as a buddy of her dad's, right? It was like, oh, gosh, we, we actually need some help with a real estate agent. You know, do you mind helping us? And like, 
the right. commission on that house will, will will significantly cover what it costs to partner with us for a year, right? And so um, exactly, if you'll do the work and not be so tied to the analytics of how is my traffic doing? Like every once in a while, a partner will say, hey, I just put a post out there and I thought it was going to be great and it only got 33 likes, right? Well, right. If, you, if you track that trail, you can actually see that somebody that somebody that saw it from their likes shared it 12 times. Like you don't, you don't really right. understand your extended reach from doing the work and just how much visibility right. you're getting. Um, but if, right. you'll, if you'll just stay consistent with it, and I, I say this all the time, we ask for a 12 month commitment when we sign a partner up. And the reason for that right. is this isn't something you try for a month or two, right? You really have to have right. a longer line of sight than that, but you don't have to renew right. your agreement with us at the end of 12 months. It converts, to, it converts right. to month to month. And the reason for that is if you'll get to month 12 with us, you'll never right. not be with us. Like you'll be doing this forever <laughs> because you will, you will sense the gravity of it and, and the impact and the potential right. it has. And you will likely have gotten some business and, the money won't be the reason that you're not doing this anymore. Um, and that just right. kind of speaks to what you're saying, but it is, it isn't crystal clear and there's not necessarily a breaking point or this, you know, this point you described right. um, because it's just gradually growing and you're gradually growing in it. And, and really, that makes sense. The, the biggest thing that people comment on is, Hey, I just went downtown to have lunch and somebody that I've never seen before walked up to me and told me they saw me as part of this project. Right. It's like, all right, right. We broke through, right? Like people are seeing us, and it matters to right. somebody. And and you know, I had a right. public comment about it, and and that's always fun, you know, to hear partners get because, you know, they've already had a bunch of really positive conversations. They already have a lot of energy around it, but now they can sense that their their community's appreciating it, and and that really fires you up, and and you know, gives you that that extra juice to keep it going, and then it just starts happening more and more and more. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that makes tons of sense. Yeah. And, uh, so let's, let's go ahead and, uh, and go back to the, uh, to, to the interview. So let's, let's just walk through a couple of key points. So, uh, so that people understand at, at a, at at least a high level, um, what, what those interviews might look like, what kind of questions they might ask, how, how do you get a good story, uh, out of a, out of a person and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys probably have uh, clear and in-depth guidance on on how to how to get these interviews done uh, when they sign up, you know, for the faces of right. So we don't have to go in complete uh, depth on everything. There's probably more than we can have time to cover in this interview. Um, but uh, but if you could give just a couple of maybe the 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 best questions to ask or, or some of the top level things that that people could be thinking when conducting an interview like that. Well, it's to your point. It it it's really about what are they interested in? How can I, mm. through reading about them, arrive at a place where I've, dis I've discovered some things about them that I didn't know, or maybe I find interesting, and I find some things right. about them that we share in common. And it's often those things that they share in common that people talk about when they see each other in the, in the grocery store. Like, hey, I saw you in the faces right. of, and I didn't know that you've been to Alaska recently. My husband and I were just there, and you know, now that we're creating conversation, which is part of, part of the end goal, right? But I will say right. a couple of things that are critical. I don't know how valuable it is to, to just walk through an interview list, but we don't, we don't draft and offer a story as an outcome. Um, today's consumer, and you, you mentioned this earlier, they don't want to read eight paragraphs about Zach Hammer, right? Right. So when we, when we actually share the content, it's actually as an interview, it's question, answer, question, answer. You can read the right. interview as though the person that actually did it themselves, um, because we want them to be able to consume a story in three to five minutes, not right. in 10 or 12 minutes, right? And so right. I think short form content is important. One of the things that I get asked right. all the time is why is this not a video platform? We do it with high res images and question and interview stories. We right. want it to be easy to administer, Right. We want to we want it to fit into our every day as a real estate agent and, and right. not require a ton of work to be able to get our two stories out every week, because that's how we drive maximum engagement. And if I were to try right. to sit down and physically like video interview a 20 minute conversation and then edit that and pop and produce that and, and get it to a place where I've got 12 or 15 minutes of media, meaningful content. One, right. that's a lot of content. That's a long video in today's marketing world. Right. Two, it's going to take you half a day, right? 
And so you won't be able to consistently do that twice a week for now until forever. Right. You just won't You'll arrive at doing that once or twice a month. And right. I think that it becomes really important with, with social media and with small form content, we can captivate and capture the attention of a ton of people and it doesn't have to be right. video. The other part of it I'll mention is, you know, the lady that's been with the same school system for 20 years working as a crossing guard that everybody knows, but nobody really knows. She's a great story. She might not be comfortable hopping on video, right? Like right. The, the who's who stuff, like all your business owners and your chamber of commerce people, it's nothing to do with video right. together. They do it all the time as part of their marketing. This project works right. because that's not, that's not the only people we're celebrating. We're celebrating everybody. Right. And so I, I would say, well, everybody in America today is going to tell you to leverage video more. And I think it should be part of your right. mix. To do something like this in the frequency that we're talking about, I, I would shy away from that. So interview that makes question, sense. you know, as it relates to what to ask, right? You know, when, how long have you been in Gainesville? You know, tell us about right. your background. What do you do professionally? Tell us a little bit about your family mix, like a, some stuff that everybody would be generally curious about that you would ask everybody. But then it's like, right. who's your favorite place to have lunch? You know, who's the most interesting person you've met in Gainesville? Um, right. It's, it's things about who's your favorite, you know, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite TV show? It, it's just things that right. give us some insight into, you know, the last trip you took. Um, you know, if, if you could name one thing in the top five of your bucket list, what's that? It, it, it's just right. the things that, that give you some insight into who they really are. And that's generally what people like to learn about others as a way of discovering what do we have in common and if you read right. enough stories, right? So I'm, I'm not a big TV guy. Um, and, and there are right. lots of popular, you know, shows that have come out on Netflix and stuff. If I, if I read about 30 or 40 people in my community over three or four months, and 18 of those 30 people said that they all watched the same show, I'm suddenly <laughs> going to become intrigued, right? And so <laughs> right. There, are, there are elements of it where we describe what we love about Gainesville and what's unique about us as individuals that... Right. We will all identify with in our own way for different reasons. Um, right. So I, I wouldn't. Again, this is an this is an area that I wouldn't overthink. Um, you can right. Do and and I think, and I think Go that's ahead. that's one of the key things that I that I'd have people pull from that is that that you know really si simple questions will work well for this, right? Like you can you'll start you'll start to find and this. this you know, if somebody went out and did this, they might even find that they start changing up some of the questions as they as they figure out what produces more of an interesting answer or not, right? And so it, it's going to be an ever changing, ever ever evolving thing. But uh, but yeah, I mean, really, it it, it comes back to some basic questions. Um, that's going to you know extract some of those interesting interesting stories and interesting bits of information. And uh, and I do, I love I love that you describe um, you know, why it makes sense to do this as. Uh, like a, like a write up and and just kind of a natural conversation. Um, just real quick, do you uh, what do you do? Do you like just throw down like a like an audio recorder or something? Like you just record on record the conversation on on your phone or on a on like a Zoom recorder or something? Or how, how do you do the technical portion of that? So that's how we started doing it. Um, when this right. when this all first started, all of our partners were sitting down and doing these interviews in person, and they would take their smartphone or a handheld recorder. And then you would have right. to go back and transcribe a 30 or 45 minute interview and, and create your draft on the, on the dashboard, the back end of your WordPress site, which none of this, none of this is super highly technical. Anybody can learn to do this. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Right. Um, right. And so we were, we were helping our partners. They could send us the audio file and we would do the transcription for them and then they would clean right. it up. So it would take 30 minutes of editing. Well, COVID happens and people stopped having coffee. Yeah. Right. And so I right. had this, Right. I had a really strong desire to continue to have these stories be told. And so we actually right. coded a interview form on the back end of all of our partner sites. And so you could send nice. them a link to a form online and they could actually fill it out for you prior to meeting nice. in person or hopping on Zoom or you know having a phone call. Again, for three months during COVID, nobody was going outside. So I would right. say, Zach, I'm doing this community project. One of the members of our community has said that, you know, you're a really positive person and that you'd be great to highlight and recognize as part of this project. Can we set up a phone call? I'd like to ask you a few questions about what you love about our community next Tuesday at nine o'clock. Before we get on right. the phone, I'm going to send you an interview form 
If you'll just fill that out for me, it'll give me a lot of context about you before we connect, right? And so now we send this form over and they go through and they fill everything out we need, a little introductory paragraph. They answer all the questions. They, they download a picture. They pick the category that best represents their background so that we can identify what they did. And when they publish right. that form, it automatically creates a post on the site, right? So there's some technical nice. ability that we have access to that has made the effort required to actually get stuff on the, con the content on the website. It now takes minutes, right? Instead of hours. Nice. Um, and, and you would have to talk to, you know, whoever's helping you with your site to figure that stuff out because there's a level of coding expertise that goes into that. But shy of that, right. you've got some work to do, right? You've got to create an audio file. Right. I, I would highly recommend against while you're interviewing somebody taking a bunch of notes, right? Like mm, you want this right. to be, you want to connect with them. You want to listen, right? I, I'm kind of a right. sales geek, right? And so part of building rapport is listening intently to what the other person is talking about because when, when they get right. a sense that they've been heard, they feel understood and that level of un understanding creates a connection, right? So during the interview, right. we want it to just flow. And so I would definitely recommend recording it. Know that you'll have a little extra work in sitting back down and taking that recording and writing out questions and answers and filling out and creating that draft um, on the site. But none of that is, it should be too complicated to create. Um, right. And the reality is, you know, if you're spending an hour to an hour and a half per interview in total with all your work and you're doing that eight times a right. week, right? so we're 10 or 12 hours or eight times a month. So we're 10 or 12 hours right. a month in the way we used to do it. I still think the return and all the things we've discussed are highly worth the effort. It's, it's still worth it. Yeah. We've, we've reduced it now to where you can do this probably in five or six hours a month. And that, you know, it changes the game in terms of workload and effort required. To your point, you just you just got to go have the coffee. If you go have the coffee, exactly. you can do some pretty crazy things. Um, but it's yeah, I, I, and and, and I, I I really I really like that. I really like that of of setting it up so that essentially the the work of the of the thing that like everybody else is going to see it actually happens before you even have coffee. Um, that the coffee is just more like it's it's the connection. It, it might be an opportunity to like. Uh, clarify some of the elements of the story that they filled out, and and if 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 like you wanted to go out and like beef up an ele element a little bit more, maybe maybe That's it needs right. just a little bit of refinement because the way that they write may not be as clear as like when they're talking about it. And so, sure. but when you have both, when you have the rough draft and then you have the actual your interview with them, then you could you could real quickly just make a make a minor change, a, a, a little update, and it it's easy to 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 make that powerful. Um, yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. I, I, I love, I love it. I love the, uh, I love the concept. And so, so then, so we've got, we've got our site live. We've got our site. Uh, we're, we're leveraging uh, social media to get attention on it. That will naturally start to uh, create other visibility opportunities as well. Um, and we, you talked a little bit about that. Uh, you know, our site is going to be a community resource. Uh, and we're going to have uh, more than just these interviews. Uh, and, and so we're going to have things like that. Though the site itself is, is branded as this idea and not just a, a, a separate tab on your, on your blog site or on your real estate site, right? Um, and, then, uh, and then, yeah, so then after that, we're doing, uh, we want to make sure we got about two interviews going out a week. Um, we might, you know, depending on on how these conversations go, you might actually get that a little bit front loaded, right? You might have more conversations and have more of these armed and ready to go um, so that you can release at about two a week, correct? That's right. right. Um, and then, yeah, and then I guess from there, um, you know, really the, 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 the next question is, is there, is there anything, and I, I feel like I already know the answer to this, but is there anything that people, you know, that real estate agents are having to do at this point in order to see the effort that they're doing on a site like the Faces of, or, you know, uh, the, the equivalent for their community, right? Uh, the, the Faces of, uh, is there any extra effort that they're having to do to, to turn that attention into, into real estate transactions? Is there, is there any other work that they're doing on that, on that side? I think this is up to the individual. Um, I obviously, I don't, I'm not, I used to be licensed in real estate. I'm not licensed anymore. And, and this is all I do now. But right. I, if I were doing this personally, everybody I talk to through that exchange, I'm going to finish the interview by asking them, when you think about the faces of Buford, where I live, 
who's one person that comes to mind that should be recognized, right? And so I'm going to ask for access right. to their network, their sphere of influence, and, and have them sort of refer me in. And, and that's going to be, it's going to give me a sense of the level of connection we just created. And, and it's, not, it's not an interrogation, right? It's not like I'm <laughs> the one asking all the questions. They're asking questions about me too. And so we're getting to know each right. other. And so what I'll say is this, Brad, now five years in, is on the board of four different companies. Um, oh, he's, had, he's had 15 different high school interns come through his office to help with this project because he got involved interviewing teachers, right? He's been the guest right. teacher at a class and that class created a competition for schools and small business marketing that they have here in Georgia. They placed third in the right. state by highlighting this project nice. out of Gainesville. And so they ended up going to nationals in Denver. So when you use the word work, right? Opportunities right. will naturally, doors will open, things will crystallize or become available to you that you would have otherwise never even known about. And you will have right. to decide, do I want to invest more time, my time, right? And going down those paths and down those rabbit holes because of the benefit that it, that gives me in, in growing more connections with more people in my community. And so my hope is that you, right. you're eager to have those opportunities and that you flush those out. And, and I actually listen right. for that as feedback from our partners. Like, so you're sharing your two stories a week. And, and so you've gotten three deals. That's great. How has your influence translated to your involvement in the community? What have you been invited to go be a right. part of? Because that really is a suggestion of how impactful you are. People are going to want you to be a part of things they're doing. And so that, that would be what I would describe as more work as an outcome of this that in my mind is incredibly beneficial. Um, and, and that right. plays out very differently depending on the person that's, that's driving the project, right? And, um, right. And, and how they see that the world and, and kind of how they chase after abundance and things like that. But um, yeah, that, that would be and that, that makes sense. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, and, and honestly, that's almost exactly where, uh, where, where I was thinking is the reality is this isn't the kind of thing that like, you're going to do all this work to, to build up this influence locally. And then you still have to go out and do a bunch of prospecting in order to get it to convert, right? Like this is, th this is, this is the kind of effort that's going to be very front loaded. You're going to do the effort up front, but then the way that the deals are going to start coming in are going to be people picking up the phone and saying, Hey, I need to list my house. Can you help me? <laughs> not, not like, it, you know, not like you're having to track people down and having to track down those opportunities. It, it, it's very much more natural, just the same way that like, you know, uh, somebody in your friend, you know, your friends, your family, your personal sphere might reach out to you for that kind of help. That's the kind of result that you're going to see from something like this, uh, where, where that, those kinds of deals are going to just, they're going to come naturally as a result of the front end work that you do building out something like this. And then further, just like you mentioned, the, the work that ends up coming of this tends to be more involvement in the community, right? And, and more opportunities for, you know, for, again, doing good while you're doing well um, and, uh, and, and having more opportunity for that. So that, that, makes a, that makes a ton of sense, ton of sense. So I, I, I love it. So, uh, so yeah, so, you know, I think at, at, at this point, uh, I think we've, we've covered as much as makes sense to cover in this interview about the process for people. Um, so what I'd say is the, the next step for anybody who's interested in this concept, uh, you know, I, I highly encourage you, if you like this idea, uh, get out there and, and start doing something with it. Now, it may not be, it may not be the fit for everybody, okay? Uh, the kinds of people who are going to be the right fit for this are going to be the kind of people who, yes, of course you want to be successful in business. You want to make money. You have to make money. A successful business needs to be profitable. So as a marketing strategy, it, it ultimately has to pay off down that way. But a big portion of the, of the ROI of, a, of an endeavor like this is, is out of the purpose and impact. And that has to have a lot of meaning to you as well, if you're going to go out and do something like this. Um, because otherwise, while the strategy works, you may not have the, the, the energy or the bandwidth to do it if, you don't, if, if, if those kinds of interactions don't light you up as well, right? Where you get to see the impact that you're making in the community. That's, that's what, you know, the, it, you know it, it does take work. It does take effort to do something like this. So if you're the kind of person that if, if you were hearing about the impact that you're making in the community, if you're, hearing, you know, if you're hearing that kind of stuff, if that makes you come alive and makes you excited to do more, then this is likely a really good fit for, for you and your personality. And I would highly encourage you to take action and, and start on this idea. And even further, 
if you want it to be easy, <laughs> I really mm -hmm. recommend you check out the faces of so that, so that they could, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can get started, get going, uh, and, and really just dive in and make that parse process as easy as possible. Uh, you know, to help you along that path, we did set up uh, a link where you can essentially let them know that you came through the real estate growth hacker show, uh, uh -huh. that, that you, that you heard about the faces of through this, uh, through this ep episode or through, uh, you know, real estate growth hackers and to get there through that link, it's going to be realestategrowthhackers.com slash go slash the faces of that will also be available in the uh, in the show notes and you know wherever you're seeing this there should be a link to that uh, around this as well so definitely if you want to go check them out and you want to let them know that real estate growth hackers sent you that's the best way to do it realestategrowthhackers.com slash go slash the faces of uh and uh I, I guess one other question that uh that people may have what and and I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know exactly how you want to talk talk through this because I know sometimes pricing changes. Um, but what's what's the what's what's kind of the cost involvement if they want to work with uh, with the faces of? And feel free to answer that, however makes the most sense for you right now. If that makes sense. No, I, I appreciate it. I um I actually am, am proud of the fee structure that we put together. It's it's very affordable. Right. Um, so one thing I'll mention when we partner with somebody in a community. Um, and, and when we talk about community, we probably want to have more than 25 or 30,000 people because we want to have some right. reach. We want to be able to get out in front of a decent sized audience. We probably right. don't want to be much bigger than 100,000 people because at some point we stop identifying with that as our community, right? Here where I live in Atlanta, we would never do the faces of Atlanta, which has 800,000 people because people that live in Atlanta, they identify with some of the smaller communities inside of Atlanta, like Buckhead and Midtown and Decatur, right? right? So. Um, there's a little work in defining your community, but when we, when we work with a, a partner in a community, it's an exclusive relationship. So right. we are partnering and licensing this platform exclusively to one agent in a community. So there's, there's this, you know, as we continue to grow, there'll be fewer and fewer markets available. And I'll just say that for the benefit of those looking that are on the fence, um, you know, at least check us out, and at least allow me to show you what it is, because um, if you're interested by the content, then I'm pretty confident you'll be pretty excited about the way we've done it. Um, we have a private Facebook group where all of our partners from all over the country are a part of this Facebook community, right? So we're building a, a national network of like-minded people that like to serve others. And I have a feeling that community in and of itself is going to be of pretty high reward as we get to six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand partners across the country. Um, I have a, a real estate coach that I hired that has been coaching real estate for a long time that I hired to coach our partners and how to leverage this platform in their business. So you'll get a coach to make sure you understand nice. how to build a social media strategy, to understand how to use the technology, you know, to understand how to ask and, and position an interview when you want to reach out to somebody in your community. And so there's a ton of support in that way. Um, but we're licensing the market for a one-time setup fee of $650. And I use that to get their site live within a week. Um, and then right. there's a monthly license fee that's exclusive with them for 250 bucks a month. And you nice. can start within a week of signing up. And if you'll go do a hundred, a hundred coffees a year with us and do this the way that we recommend doing it, I guarantee you have no trouble paying for your $3,000 a year that you'll spend with us to be able to do it. And you'll be nice. able to be a part of a brand that is, is really committed to creating community impact from coast to coast. And that's frankly the part that I'm most excited about is, is what this brand will be recognized for in the future, not necessarily the business impact we've created for the, the people that are sponsoring it. Right. And, and I just, I want to, I want to let people know, uh, the reality is that, 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 that pricing part of why uh, it's as cheap as it's able to be is because you guys have done the legwork of figuring out what exactly makes this successful, right? Because like, I, I, you know, you and I, you and I talked in the past, I had, I had been looking at running a service uh, where we're going to be doing a similar thing, but with video and you can, you can imagine, I mean, I know going into this, if you're running this kind of service with video, the, the cost have to be higher because the amount of work is drastically higher. Right. Um, and, and so part of why you're able to, to keep the, that cost so effective is you figured out you don't need the video 
And actually, there's a lot of benefit in maybe not doing the video in, in terms of getting people to be ready to do those interviews, ready, you know, actually getting that content out, making it more easy and natural, and that you still get all, all, all of that benefit of being in the community. Um, so I, I would just encourage everybody, man, that, that, that pricing sounds fantastic. I, even if it, you know, by the time you get there, uh, and, and maybe the pricing has changed a bit. Man, I was, uh, just to put this in perspective, I was looking at charging about $2,500 a month in order to run a similar uh, sort of service with video. So the, the pricing and, and shoot, it would have been worth it. Uh, but the pricing of this is very, you know, very affordable. I think for, for most agents, uh, you're exactly right. I mean, three grand a year, even anywhere near that most agents are going to, are going to very easily pay for that as long as they get and do the work. Um, so I would, I would, you know, I would encourage you if, if this sounds like something that, uh, that, that you could be passionate about, you care about your local community deeply, uh, you want to get out there and, and build some influence you know, for yourself while also spotlighting and lifting up your local community. Man, this is a, a fantastic project. I'm really excited uh, that it exists in the world. Uh, you know, Brian, thank you uh, for, you know, like I, I fully believe that that entrepreneurs and business owners are a big part about what actually solves problems in this world. And, 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 and I just thank you for creating this service and creating the opportunity uh, to make this easier for agents to impact communities. I know that you guys are gonna be doing big things. You already are. Um, so, you know, I wish you the best of success uh, in this endeavor. If you're, you know, a, you know, as a listener, if you're listening to this and you're not sure if you wanna, if you wanna sign up or not, I, I highly encourage you, if anything, at least reach out. Um, if it seems like it might be a good fit, reach out, learn more about it um, and, and have that conversation, especially uh, before your area is taken and, and the opportunities removed from you. Um, so, uh, again, if you guys want to check it out, you can feel free. If you want to let them know that you came through real estate growth hackers, that's real estate growth hackers.com slash go slash the faces of, uh, if you want to check it out directly, it's the faces of.com. So feel free. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't mind either way. Just get, get over there. If it sounds like it's, uh, uh, something that you're interested in. Um, and then, uh, and then otherwise, I guess we'll, uh, you know, we'll catch you on the next one. I hope this was valuable for you again, Brian. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll be in touch and we'll, we'll see you on the uh, next episode. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it very much, Zach. Enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for tuning in to the Real Estate Growth Hacker Show. Remember, done is better than perfect. To turn the marketing ideas and tactics you just learned into real growth for your real estate business, visit us at realestategrowthhackers.com. If you like this episode, consider sharing it with another real estate professional who could benefit from the information. Or maybe you'd like to subscribe to the show to never miss an episode. You can leave a rating or review on iTunes with your biggest takeaway, helping this show to reach and help more people just like you. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode.